Noah Gregson is expected to team up with Richard Petty next season, and Kevin Harvick voices concerns over the safety of the next-gen car. How's it going, y'all? My name is Eric. Welcome to Out of the Groove. I hope you've had a wonderful week. Happy Friday. I've already seen some pretty cool headlines going into Michigan this week. They, I believe, sold out of all camping spots for this weekend. I expect an exciting race, a consequential race, only four races until the regular season. Great chance for a, another surprise winner. But we're not here to talk about that. We're talking a little silly season, and then yes, we do have to talk about safety concerns with the next gen. Kevin Harvick had some pretty strong words in a recent racer.com article. We'll get to that in a moment, but let's begin with the silly season conversation. Jordan B. Bianchi, writer for The Athletic, posted a great, uh, you know, kind of silly season update story on The Athletic. I'm not going to touch on everything he said. You'll have to subscribe to The Athletic to check that out. But I do want to focus on his Noah Gregson prediction. It sounds all but confirmed at this point that Noah Gregson will go full-time Cup Series racing next year in the 42 car. For Petty GMS, here's what Jordan Bianchi wrote in The Athletic. Another strong season in Xfinity has catapulted Gregson into a prospect many teams have looked at signing, but the winner of that sweepstakes is Petty GMS Motorsports. You'll recall that just a few weeks ago, Petty GMS confirmed Ty Dillon would not return to the team next year. The two sides mutually agreed to go their separate ways. Adam Stern reported then that Noah Gregson was likely the leading candidate to line the 42, but Bianchi here seems to be confirming it. He continues to write, The team is working towards finalizing a contract with the 24-year-old that will see him take over driving duties of its number 42 car, according to people familiar with the discussions. An official announcement is expected soon. Sounds like it's happening. Noah Gregson will be a full-time NASCAR Cup Series driver at long last. Boy, it feels like eons ago we were talking about him underachieving in a KBM truck. Jumped over to Chevrolet, Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s teams, had some up and down moments, even recently some down moments, got penalized for that intentional wreck at Road America. But he's also begun to find his stride, winning multiple races the last couple seasons. This year he's got two wins on the books. He's emerged as, I think, one of the more consistent contenders in the Xfinity series, a legit title contender this year. I'm sorry, did I say two wins? I totally forgot he just won Pocono. He actually has three wins on the season, so certainly one of the championship favorites. He's made some Cup Series starts this year in the 16 car for Colleague, but quite honestly hasn't really impressed. His best resume so far is his Xfinity Series resume for sure. In a moment I'll talk about whether or not this is the right decision for Noah Gregson, but first I'm a little surprised to hear this announcement is coming so soon considering just a couple weeks ago Noah Gregson said this to CBS's Steven Taranto. Quote, I enjoy racing in the Xfinity series and enjoy the people, enjoy Junior Motorsports. Hopefully, getting to race with Junior Motorsports and have an opportunity in the future to chase an Xfinity championship would be a great opportunity for me. I don't want to say it's the last year that I'll have at Junior Motorsports. He also told CBS Sports that he hoped to go Cup Series racing with Junior Motorsports one day. Dale Jr. has obviously been in the charter market for a year or two now. Nothing's come to fruition. Maybe Noah Gregson got impatient, said, oh, I'll do this Junior Motorsports to Cup deal may never happen. I guess I better take what's in front of me now. I'm just a little surprised because I heard those comments a couple weeks ago and thought, oh, maybe Gregson's not going to jump at the first available Cup Series ride. Maybe he's going to wait and see if Junior Motorsports has an option. Maybe a, a more competitive seat at a different team or even a different manufacturer opens up. But no, it sounds like, according to Adam Stern, Jordan Bianchi, Noah Gregson is joining Petty GMS for the 2023 season. Is this the right move? Look, it's a full-time Cup Series gig. This is what every race car driver who dreams of racing stock cars dreams of. This is the ultimate goal, to race full-time in the NASCAR Cup Series. And in this case, Gregson's going to be driving a car with Richard Petty, the king, branding all over it. Sure, it's mainly GMS racing now, more Gallagher and that whole group, they came in and bought the majority of Petty Motorsports of RPM. So now it's really GMS, just with Richard Petty's face plastered here and there, but still, that's awesome. To race for and be associated with the king, boy, that's every young racer's dream, right? I'm sure Gregson is bringing a little bit of sponsorship to the table. He's somewhat polarizing in the Xfinity series, but he is one of the biggest and boldest personalities. Sponsors, fans, everyone's taking notice. He's, he's fun to watch, whether you love to love him or love to hate him. So I'm sure he's bringing some sponsorship there. I doubt it's a full season, but it, it's probably substantial. Is Petty GMS, though, the best opportunity for a young driver to succeed? 
I don't really know. This year we've seen that 43 car take a big step forward. With GMS now on board providing support, the next gen car of course, Eric Jones and crew chief Dave Lenz have had a tremendous year by Richard Petty Motorsports standards at least. Jones is like 17th in the regular season standings. That's even with that 35 point penalty he sustained a couple weeks ago. He's got a couple top five finishes. He has seven at top 10 finishes, both more than he had all of last year. He's had a really solid season and just signed a multi-year contract extension. That 42 car though, it's been a different story. Ty Dillon sits 30th in the regular season standings. No top fives, does have one top 10. It's been a struggle over there. Now granted, Ty Dillon didn't race in the cup for most of the 2021 season. He's also working with what I believe is a more inexperienced crew chief. Jerame Donley is his name and looking up stats, I couldn't find any history beyond this year. I believe he is a first year cup series crew chief. So maybe Petty GMS is just spread too thin. The most experienced guys are over with Eric Jones and Ty Dillon is running the startup car. Maybe bringing Noah Gregson in will allow them to pour more support, more resources into that program and maybe the 42 next year will be a more competitive seat. I don't know, I just know right now I wouldn't be too excited about driving a car that's 30th in points. I think Noah Gregson's a good driver. I don't know that he's ever going to be a, a championship contender in the NASCAR Cup Series, a, you know, a perennial playoff contender. I'm not sure about that. He's won two, three, and now three races these last three Xfinity Series seasons. That's solid, but he is driving some of the best cars. You expect him to win a handful of races every year. If he goes to Cup and is now driving a B or C tier ride, what are we gonna see from Noah Gregson? I think he'll be lucky to crack the top 20 in points at any point next season. You gotta wonder if you know, maybe colleagues said they're going in a different direction. That was not gonna be a full-time opportunity. Obviously, Junior Motorsports doesn't sound like they have any imminent Cup Series plans. Maybe Petty GMS was the only legitimate option to go full-time Cup Series racing for Noah Gregson. And, and Gregson's, again, he's been in the Xfinity Series now four years. He wants to go Cup racing. He's made that clear all year long. This is the goal. I don't blame him for taking this opportunity. And GMS, this is really their first year in the Cup Series. I know they kind of absorbed Richard Petty Motorsports, but GMS, they are a brand new team. I think they're only going to get better from here. Could certainly be an exciting group and a great opportunity over the long haul. So happy for Noah Gregson if, in fact, this deal comes to fruition. But I'm really curious to see what his performance and what his team's performance look like next year. I don't expect Gregson to compete with Eric Jones. I think he will outperform Gregson most all of next year. But can Gregson do better than Ty Dillon? Can that 42 car, that entire program, catch up to where the 43 has been most of this year? That's what I'll be looking out for. Now, real quick, I hate to end the week on kind of a down note, but safety has been in and out of the national NASCAR conversation the past few weeks, ever since Kurt Busch was sidelined with a concussion after a crash at Pocono. He's about to miss his third straight race. It's got drivers, media, fans all asking, once again, about the next-gen car and its safety record. Kelly Crandall, writing for Racer.com, posted an article actually today, which featured some pretty spicy quotes from several drivers who were voicing their concerns about how this next gen car was designed. It's stronger, it's stiffer, it does not give when it hits the outside wall the way the Gen 6 did. Which means the drivers themselves, their bodies, are feeling more of the forces when that car hits the wall and stops. That's what led to Kurt Busch's concussion. That's what's caused several other drivers like Christopher Bell, Joey Logano, Bubba Wallace, Austin Dillon, among others, to voice concerns over the past few months. And now Kevin Harvick. I want to highlight his quote in this Racer.com piece. He had some strong words to say. Here's what he said regarding the next-gen car and its safety. I think these are the exact concerns that the drivers had from the very first day we saw the car. There hasn't been a lot of progression other than we changed some of the rear clip stuff. We changed some of the impact stuff but these cars don't crash like the other cars crash. They're violent impacts, and they feel a lot different than what the crash data G-load is. It goes straight through the driver's body. Harvick then talked about what he's seen from NASCAR. Quote, I saw a list of stuff from them, and it's not the top thing on the priority. It's always about competition. And I know that they won't tell you that, but the concerns that the drivers have just hasn't seemed to resonate into a really, really quick response in trying to make that better. That line is concerning because the little bit I've talked about safety the past couple weeks, 
As I've said, the purpose of me talking about safety is to try and bump this up NASCAR's priority list. It's not an easy fix. And in that same article, Kevin Harvick acknowledges that. It's not a quick fix, but it's something that should be a high priority. It should be at or very near the top of the list. Uh, Kurt Busch, one of the older drivers, he sustained a few heavy hits this year. I'm not saying every driver out there is sustaining concussions the way Kurt Busch did, but the fact that any driver has sustained a concussion and been sidelined this year is cause for concern. Head injuries shorten careers, I'll say it again. They affect lives, obviously, more importantly, but from NASCAR's business standpoint, you don't want your young star drivers to be suffering head injuries early in their careers, or even in the middle portion of their careers, or even at the end of their careers. You want to see drivers race as long as possible. Fans gravitate to drivers. You don't want drivers coming and going every 5, 10, 15 years. You want to see a driver stick around for 20 plus years. You want to see guys race into their 40s as long as they're still competitive. And Kurt Busch is still very much competitive, but he's not able to race right now because he sustained a head injury. This is a serious concern, and the drivers seem to think NASCAR is not listening to them in their internal discussions, so they're venting about it publicly, as Kevin Harvick did right there. I'm trying to raise more alarms about it. Now the drivers are trying to raise more alarms about it. I hope NASCAR, just for publicity's sake, listens and bumps this up their priority list. It's not an easy fix. I don't even expect them to make any serious changes this year, but come next year, whatever they can do to soften the impacts of head-on, front and rear collisions, they need to explore that. They need to be pushing for that. That needs to be near or at the very top of their to-do list. And that's what Kevin Harvick's saying. That's what I've been saying for the past few weeks. Look, like I said yesterday, NASCAR has had a tremendous safety record over the past 20 years. So I'm willing to give them the benefit of the doubt to an extent. But this is an all-new car, a new beast, a new animal. NASCAR's not airtight. They can make mistakes and work to improve themselves. That's all I'm asking. But that's gonna do it for this episode. That's gonna do it for this week on Out of the Groove. Thank you all so much for watching. Share your thoughts down in the comment section below. What's your reaction to those quotes, those words from Kevin Harvick? How do you feel about Noah Gregson going to Petty GMS next year? It's not confirmed, but it sounds very likely. Leave your thoughts down in the comment section below. I didn't even talk about what this could mean for JRM's Xfinity program. Who gets the nine next year? That's a different topic for a different video. But thanks for watching, y'all. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. As always, a big thank you to my Patreon supporters as well. Y'all go above and beyond to support the channel to keep things growing. I greatly appreciate your support. We'll be back again this weekend. Michigan race review right around the corner. Can't wait. Like I said earlier, gonna be a consequential race and could be a bit of a wild card. Those wide open turns, sweeping front straightaway. Anything can happen there in Michigan. Looking forward to it. I will see you all Sunday night.